Hello and welcome to this first video on a series on LTI. So what is LTI? LTI stands for Learning Tools Interoperability. It's an interoperability standard developed on just the IMS Global Consortium. IMS Global is a standards organization which manages many tech standards. And LTI is one of the very important ones. So the so way uh, we work uh, under IMS Global to build up the standards is through working group. So the LTI working group is made of individuals on both sides of the interoperability frontier. So that is tool vendors and platform vendors and institutions using those also contribute uh, to the working group. To know more about those, I encourage you to visit the IMS Global website and discover the other standards uh, it harbors because there are quite a few other ones that are interesting such as open badges and one roster and so on. So back to LTI, this video series is about LTI 1.3. So under the hood, with LTI compared to the previous version, everything changed compared to LTI 1.1. So in many ways, this could have been called, I would say, maybe LTI 13. So hopefully, uh, what I would hope is a lucky number, but it's LTI 1.3. But LTI, LTI 1.3 is part of a larger initiative called LTI Advantage. And I think that's really the name we need to remember. LTI Advantage, because LTI Advantage encompass LTI 1.3 plus a key extensions to the LTI uh, ecosystem. Going back to LTI, to understand LTI, one needs to understand another three letters acronyms called LMS, the Learning Management System, because at its core, LTI is a way to standardize the integration with the LMS. What is the LMS? Well, the LMS is first and foremost a way for instructors to set the online presence for their course. So that's the, if you want, that's the online course central, the place to, for students and instructors to go and access anything relevant to their course online. Uh, a course is referred as a learning context, and that is the most important context in LTI, the course context. In a course, in the course learning context, the student will not only have access to the course content, but often communication tools, calendars, quizzes, and assessment activities, and of course, the gradebook. So as an instructor or institution, you might find content or activities relevant to you, to some of your courses or all your courses. For example, there might be a great uh, economic simulation you would want to include to your microeconomic course. But how do you put it in there? Because it's offered by another vendor. How would you make it integrate as seamlessly as possible with the rest of your online course content? This is why LTI was created, standardizing a way to move from the LMS course shell to the tool in the least intrusive way. So all this happens in the browser. That means moving from the LMS to the tool. So user clicks on the link in the LMS and then the tool opens. So this is why LTI started first as a UI flow. And so when the user leaves the LMS to go to the tool, the LMS in this request passes control to the tool by including in the request additional information that would make the transition as seamless as possible. And those data are normalized under what is called an LTI message. So let's have a look into what's in this LTI message. So the first thing you need to be able to transparently transfer from the user to the tool is identity. So in LTI in that sense makes the LMS act as an identity provider, allowing some kind of single sign-on. But identity is not enough. We need to know which course is launched by specifying the context. So you have in the LTI message information about the course ID, course name, stuff like that. And as important, we need to know the role of the user in that context, as often the tool will differ a different experience based on whether you are an instructor or not, for example. So our tool needs also need to know what to open. So it knows which course, which user, which roles, but what is the things you want to open. For example, which chapter, which simulation, which game, which quiz. And there are a few other contextual data that are defined as part of the LTI message. So the LTI message is all about standardizing how this data is transferred from the LMS to the tool. But transferring this information would be of any use if it could not be trusted. This is why LTI needs a way to secure the payload. And that is what LTI uh, is also about, not only what is inside, inside this LTI message, but how it's secured. And LTI 193 totally revisit how this information is passed around and secured. So now the user clicks on the link and to open, let's say, a minigame. But another question comes around, how did the link actually got into the LMS course in the, to begin with? That's why there is another UI flow that's part of the LTI advantage, which is called the LTI deep linking flow. So you can see the deep linking flow as a picker flow, 
But nothing says it has to be a picker experience. It allows you to launch from the LMS to the tool to get, pick, create some content and return it back to the LMS where the link is going to be inserted. So that link will contain the information about the where to launch the tool. So when, next time when the student or instructor clicks on that link, then he will launch the mini game or the simulation or the chapter. It was picked during the, the deep linking flow. Deep linking can also be used to pick other kind of content than LTI links, such as images. And in that context, it's often used inside rich text editors, for example, to be able to grab assets like images or videos from an asset library, which is LTI compatible. So now we have seen that LTI has two UI flows, launching the resource, but also picking that resource from, uh, from the tool to add to the course. However, often the tool will need to communicate back to the LMS through service calls. The most important use case is, guess what? Returning grades. And actually, um, LTI Advantage through the assignment and grade services offer a richer means to integrate with the gradebook that, that LTI used to provide with basic outcome service, which was in the previous version of LTI. And there is another often requested use case for a tool is to get access to the roster of the course. And this is why LTI Advantage also exposes a names and roles provisioning service, which is basically a fancy name to say, to say a, a rostering service that allows a tool to get access to the roster of the current context of the current course. It doesn't allow the tool to modify it, but just to query, to query it. So to recap, uh, LTI defines UI flows which are defined through LTI messages and allows the user to navigate from the LMS to the tool and sometimes from the tool back to the LMS in the browser. It also defines service APIs, which are meant to be server to server and defines how the uh, LMS should define API and eventually also tool API, which well, is not the case right now, but will come up in the future. So UI flows are resource link and deep linking. The so services are assignment and grade services for grading and names and role provisioning for access to the course membership. So all of those together, that makes what is currently now called the LTI Advantage. As a tool, when a learning platform says it's a certified LTI Advantage, you know that you can use any of those. You don't have to use all of them, but you know you can rely on all of those to be present into, into the LMS. Maybe the LMS offers more, but you know at least that it offers that. But the LTI ecosystem itself is greater than LTI Advantage. There are other working groups that actually use LTI in one, one way or another. The first one to come to mind is Common Cartridge. So Common Cartridge, if you can think of a way, as a way to zip your course, uh, so that it can be imported into another platform, possibly of another vendor. And this zipped course could contain LTI links. LTI Resource Search is another uh, specification by IMS, which allows the LMS to now use as a service API to query a content store. And this content, content store can return LTI links as a result. And then you have Caliper for learning events and a specific extension how so that an LMS can communicate to the LTI tool where to report learning events uh, happening in the tool so that they can be gathered back at the LMS record store. You can look at this LTI Advantage as LTI Advantage 2019. But it may very well be that in a few years down the road, like 2021, IMS will come up with a new version of LTI Advantage, an extended version of LTI Advantage, which will include new uh, extensions for LTIs that the working group would have standardized. For example, it might be that uh, the working group standardizes group management and allowing um, a tool to access a grouping inside the course, which is often a requested feature. So it may be that in a few years down the road, LTI Advantage, the next iteration, will make mandatory for LMSs to support uh, exposing their group API through the uh, LTI extension. So that's it for the grand tour on LTI. The next video will be will go on the security of behind LTI 1.3 because that's the main changes around LTI. Until then, au revoir.